This is London's Tower Bridge, and throughout its 126 year history, it's seen some interesting incidents from war to sheep to a sunbathing man. But one incident stands above all the rest as the most dangerous and badass, and that was when a Hawker Hunter fighter jet flew through the middle at 420 miles per hour whilst there was still traffic on it. Why? Well, this story, like many great tales before it, starts with politics. Throughout the 60s, the UK government had been cutting funding to the armed forces, hitting the RAF particularly hard. Now, if there's one thing you should know about the RAF, it's that they're a pretty proud bunch, and so if you annoy them by, say, cutting their funding, or closing their airfields, or not properly celebrating their 1968 50th anniversary, they get pretty offended. And one man who apparently took particular offence to this was Flight Lieutenant Alan Pollock, who decided to vent his frustrations by making an anniversary air show of his own. When flying from RAF Tangmere to RAF West Raynham, Pollock told the rest of his squadron that he'd lost them and he'd meet up with them at Raynham, which he did, after taking a quick detour to central London. Armed only with an AA map of the UK, Alan flew to the city centre where he started narrowly circling the Houses of Parliament at an elevation of 60 metres. For reference, the height of the Elizabeth Tower, home to Big Ben, is 96 metres. Now, in case you haven't heard a Hawker Hunter or any fighter jet fly that low before, it's loud. Like, really loud. And whilst the government was actually debating aircraft noise abatement in the chamber, windows shook and people reported quite a noise as Pollock tore overhead. Pollock said he wanted to make sure the government knew they still had an air force, and I'm sure the message got through. After three loops, he broke off and headed down the Thames, saluted the Whitehall RAF Memorial with a wingtip, which was a nice touch, before encountering Tower Bridge. Pollock later stated he had forgotten it would be there, and initially thought to go over it. However, to quote the man himself, it was just too intriguing, and so at 420 miles an hour, with cars, buses, and pedestrians below him, Pollock became the first person to fly a jet through Tower Bridge. Well, it may have been 420 miles an hour, or it may have been 230. Alan isn't overly clear in his interviews, but either way, it was pretty fast given it was a last second decision. He even says that it was only as he was flying through the bridge that he remembered he had a tail fin and thought it could be ripped off. Unfortunately, smartphone cameras weren't as good in the 60s as they are now, so there isn't any footage of the event, but this painting of the event was made later, which is close enough. After London, on the way back to Raynham, Pollock had the slight suspicion that he may be in a bit of trouble, so he took his time getting back. He beat up, or flew at low altitude at high speed, over several other RAF sites before doing a few stunts and landing back at Raynham, where he was promptly arrested. Pollock was later quietly dismissed from the RAF, as the government didn't want a high-profile investigation. However, he received overwhelming support from the public, and in 1982, even received a full RAF pardon for his actions. In fact, the only lasting damage from this event affected a cyclist who tore his trousers when jumping off his bike in fright. Pollock offered to buy him a new pair, but the offer was graciously declined. And so that's how an RAF flight lieutenant illegally made his way onto the list of Tower Bridge-based incidents, joining other great stories such as that time a double-decker bus jumped the gap when it was accidentally let through as the bridge was lifting, that time a man drove a flock of sheep across the bridge, or that time it opened and accidentally split up Bill Clinton's motorcade. Pollock wasn't even the first to fly through the bridge. It was incredibly common during World War I, and it's been done several times both before and since, most recently for the opening of the 2012 Olympics and also by the Thunderbirds. But it's only been done illegally a handful of times, and only one of those times was in a jet. Flying low in my home.